Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight Chief 3 8 inch air drill that it is on the shelf for 80 bucks. This is part of Harbor Freight's new uh, high-end professional air tools, and it's replacing like the old red earthquake tools, although I believe those were only in uh, impact wrenches. It's nice to see Harbor Freight coming out with more a uh, professional line replacing the more common other air tools besides impact wrenches such as these drills. They rate this at 0.4 horsepower under nominal conditions. I'm not going to be able to test this under the best conditions. I don't have a quite a large enough compressor. But I'll do a nice uh, comparison to my uh, really old uh, NPK 3H drill, which was has worked out great. One thing I was going to mention right off the bat is this does have a handle exhaust. And what I've been noticing is when you have a handle exhaust, when you put oil on it, it goes through the air motor and then back out the handle exhaust. And not very much oil. Some light oil does make it into the gearbox, but it's not quite the same as the old air drills, which had exhaust out the front. So that way, any oil you put in went through not only the air motor, but through the gearbox as well. And I've been reading about, you know, a few, uh, comp actually it was, you know, various message boards posts about gearbox needing to have their air drills rebuilt and the veins themselves wear out in the air motor but also the gears are wearing out where it seems on older front exhaust tools you don't have as much gear wear just because they're constantly getting fresh oil as well as having the air kind of blow small particles of wear out obviously those small particles are active as, a, as abrasives and the point of the air tool is it's supposed to be uh, very heavy duty and supposed to last a long time that's kind of the point of the air tools uh, for decades, they were always just the power to size ratio was great, and power to weight ratio was just unbeatable due to the efficiencies of air or the way power is delivered using air. However, electric tools have really kind of come a long way. This little DeWalt 12 volt brushless is definitely not as powerful as this air drill, but it's getting a lot closer. Really, these cordless brushless tools are limited by the batteries. If this had a 20 amp battery, they could put a drone motor in this thing, and this little drill would really pound it out and this is what kind of caught me if I can get this on camera here let's do it sideways it's just how much shorter that little 12 volt drill is like wow I wasn't really expecting the 3 8 air drill to be quite so long so just trying to put that in a little bit of perspective they have all over the box Jacobs industrial truck and this is indeed a genuine Jacobs truck I'm pretty surprised about that that's a bit of extra money but this is a standard professional grade chuck. They say Jacobs Industrial Chuck just because when they're using a premium billet steel, this doesn't have like a stamped sheet metal collar pressed onto the, the ring. It's all machined. But it's still just a professional grade chuck. And what I mean by that is if we take an actual Jacobs Industrial Grade Chuck, we can take a pretty close it becomes pretty obvious both of these are 3h chucks and you can see the professional grade chuck versus the true industrial grade chuck the industrial grade chucks are much larger have much heavier bodies and the reason for that is so that they can have all that extra material to make this lobular design which gives the teeth lots of extra support versus this system here where the teeth just do not have anywhere near as much lateral support so they're throwing around industrial a little too liberally Besides that, it overall seems pretty well built. It does have a plastic uh, or composite handle, composite exhaust ring, but with a steel insert there. It does have a plastic uh, trigger or throttle, but the reverse switch is metal, and so I do like that. And this isn't really a bad position. It's pretty easy to hit it. Most times you're drilling in forward, and uh, it doesn't really interfere that much. And as far as the compactness, it's just basically the same as any other kind of modern air drill. It's very compact. Four ball bearings, one, one on each side of the air motor and two stacked against each other to have a really nice tight spindle. And I'll try to knock this apart so we can take a look at that. Give this thing a little whirl here. Really has a pretty nice sound to it, to tell you the truth. Sounds just like any other air tool, really. Vein motors only have one type of sound. But I will say that the fit and finish on these tools is really just... You know, I'm sure this is if we hunt, if I hunted around online a little better, I'd find that all sorts of pretty nice brands. But the molding is really tight. You know, surprisingly enough, the stickers have pretty good centering on it, which is like a telltale sign. The machining on this front gear case, if we look, is just 
really pretty nice. A little bit of corrosion from humidity. I mean, if it didn't say Chief and said Mac on it, you know, you would absolutely believe it. And I, I probably would believe that it's made by the same company. All right, I have this apart. And there's a few comments that I wanted to make about pulling this apart. Is it like that old air drill I had, as soon as you pulled it apart, and even a lot of other Harbor Freight, and <laughs> once again, most air tools, you can pull them apart and at least be able to disassemble the air motor. On drills, it tends to be more complicated in general, whether they're electric or air, because they always have these set screws down in the middle of the chuck. In this case, it happens to be a 3 millimeter hex, and they put a bunch of Loctite on it, and I ended up breaking a little 3 millimeter impact bit, as well as just twisting around a Bond Huss uh, Allen wrench, or hex key. So that screw's in there really tight, and it's going to have to be drilled if you ever want to remove the truck, uh, unless it happens to work itself a little bit loose through use. Uh, I understand why they use so much Loctite on it, but it's a little bit disappointing because it makes it very difficult to replace the chuck. Uh, in most circumstances, that, once again, that screw's going to have to be drilled. Let me get a light here. I mean, it's a big deal because if you drop it when the chuck is uh, in a more closed position and you have the teeth sticking out and it lands on the teeth, they're going to get bent and it'll never run a, a bit straight and then you're going to have this big hassle trying to remove the chuck. In the back, it does have three planetary gears. There is the back of the first ball bearing that I wanted to show uh, in the steel housing. So the engineering, everything is there is pretty nice, but it's uh, just a little bit, you know, I guess they were too worried about it. It's a pretty large bearing. We can see the diameter of that bearing there is going to be like one and a quarter inch. Then there's going to be a little separator rod. So there's a little space between the bearings and there's going to be the second bearing up here. So that's really nice to see. Pretty heavy duty. Here's our little ring gear. And a note for anybody who's disassembling this, this ring gear has a flat side and a side with an undercut. The side with the undercut goes towards the air motor. And it is literally just held in place by the friction of the gearbox being torqued down. The little gears, there are three little gears, but they are pretty thick. I would have to say they're about 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. And what is nice is they included little bronze uh, sleeve bearings. So one thing to note is when they have little sleeve bearings like this, they always follow like a standard roller bearing size. So you could push that out, press it out, measure its inner and outer diameter, and actually order a little needle bearing. So you could upgrade this if you wanted to, and that would be super cheap. It would only be like five bucks or something. Speaking of the other serviceability, so we do have an aluminum insert for the air motor, but that does mean that the veins of the air motor are running on aluminum, not steel, which of course wears out more quickly. Another thing I was going to mention is it appears that they use some type of, it's not like a, a real tight shrink fit, but this metal, the front part of the air motor is pressed in there to some degree, a light degree, just because there isn't a lot of scrapes, but there is a couple of scratches. So you can't just yank this air motor out. There's no way to push it out to the back. You're stuck either trying to bang it against, you know, drill hole in wood and bang it so it just hits this edge to get the air motor to come out or to use a heat a uh, heat gun to heat it up from, you know, around 120 to 150 degrees like they use to take apart cell phones to try to get this aluminum ring to expand enough to pull out the air motor. And so it does help keep it together a little more, but once again, it adds another uh, bit of hassle to serviceability. And finally, when I was unscrewing it on the other side, we see just a little bit of unpleasantness. That aluminum piece does not have the greatest, uh, didn't have the greatest quality control. In many situations in manufacturing, if you had voids in the metal that big just when you were threading it you would scrap the part because it'd be too much of a worry of having other voids and the rest of it so uh lower degree of quality control there is part of how they're saving the money anyway i'll throw this back together and we'll compare it to my old one since it'll be running off the same compressor and we'll just see how it performs oh i should mention quickly fortunately this gearbox is pretty easy just to unscrew it's an inch and a half across these flats and uh, the point I was making is true here. The only way any oil that you put in this air tool gets anywhere near those gears is what seeps by actually through this front bearing. So it's a really good idea, probably depending on how much you use this air drill, just to periodically knock off the gearbox and put some grease in there. I'm going to do a little drilling test here. I can't do a proper test because I'm only my compressor setup is only able to deliver about 65 PSI under full load or full throttle. And uh, just what I have to deal with at the moment. 
So I'm not going to compare this against any of the, you know, brushless cordless tools or even like an equivalent tool, but they say 0.4 horsepower at 2,000 RPM. So it would be the same as a quarter drill with like maybe a 3.5 amp motor, of course, at 2,000 RPM. It should be fine for drilling up to 3 8 inch through steel, uh, as long as you're actually delivering 90 PSI to the tool itself. And you'll need a pretty big compressor, 20 or 30 gallons at least. The difference with air drills and air grinders versus an impact wrench is you can get by with a very underrated compressor with an impact wrench because you're just using small bursts of power to break a bolt loose and then run it out or an air ratchet even because you're not running those continuously like grinders and drills. The drill you're just going to be running continuously full throttle until you're finished with the hole and they just suck down the air. So I'm going to drill it in wood with a 3 8 bit using a uh, progressive flute bit, so it should be a pretty decent test here. So I'm definitely underpowering it, but even yeah, proportionately feeling, that actually had plenty of power even running at low PSI for doing quite a bit of drilling. Now the big advantage with air tools, of course, is always that they're compact, they tend to be built, even this is still built pretty pretty well, even with its various flaws. And the fact that as long as you don't get stuff into the air inlet, and this has a coarse screen but not a very fine one, you can use these in any environment. Literally you could use this underwater if you needed to. Uh, it could be buried in mud and dirt and you could be drilling holes while it's buried in mud. And that's the big difference with air tools is they can take the most extreme environments. It has a loose chuck key, so the easiest way to keep track of your chuck key is just to put it in the chuck and just hand tighten it. And uh, it would have been nice if they had some kind of provision to tether it. Uh, that you know would have been handy because you always lose these things. Let's see how it does compared to this MPK. Since it's under the exact same air conditions, we'll just see how much better it is than this unknown twenty-dollar air drill, which has actually worked out great for me, and I really like the design. Definitely has more power for the same air pressure. So that was really the impetus for me to get that 3 8 one, is I knew that this air drill was pretty underpowered. I know it has some wear, but not that much wear, but it just was ended up being a screwdriver, so... I'm going to drill one more hole with this just side by side just to show the difference. That's surprising. Exact same air conditions, but just a, a little bit more modern engineering and more modern, uh, you know, computer simulated geometry. I'm sure this tool has that or just uh, overall time spent. We'll go ahead and do it right there. You can see it pretty well. Let me move that a little bit. lot deeper so man same air conditions and this had a lot more so we can see how well this performed after that drill just doing it side by side really has a lot more power I just wish it had better quality control and uh, was more serviceable these only have a 90 day warranty they're trying to really sell you on their two year extended service plan and more than likely this will last at least a couple years it's the more nuances of the you know the aluminum barrel the pitting uh, the you know the not quite as good a professional versus an, a true industrial Jacobs chuck will show up over years you know five ten years and then you're going to have all these problems trying to you know rebuild bearings replace chucks and if that barrel totally wears out uh, you know your only choice is to try to hone it or something but you know it should have really been made out of steel but for eighty bucks it's really you know they found that really tight price point where they're giving you more or less a real professional grade tool for cheap and they're just going to cut out the warranty and just use uh, lower grade parts but that still are on par. I like how much better this performs than my old air drill. It really was a lot more power under just the same you know air conditions, same air pressure. Uh, it's just the Harbor Freight's now getting to this real fine price point where this is almost as good as the really nice ones just a, a bit cheaper and they chintz they cut you out on the warranty 
but you really got to do your homework to really see if this $80 air drill is going to be what you really want. Um, because if you really hunt around for 100 120 uh, as soon as you start getting those ranges, you can get uh, even nicer air drills than this, which have much better warranties and are built to last a little bit longer and are easier to service. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.